Here is problem 25, assignment 2. We have a half circle of charge. This is the center of the circle. This is the radius of the circle. And now we want to find out what the field is at the center. So all we know is how to do that for point charges. So can we consider this a point? No. But supposing we don't know how to do this, we might just consider it a point. So we collect all the charge and we place it at the middle. So we have a charge, total charge Q, placed here at a point. What's the distance? It's a distance R. So what's the field going to be if we imagine this was all collected to a point? It's going to be a field in this direction, kq over r squared. That's the answer to the first question. All right, well, it's not really a point charge. The charge is actually spread out. And if we... So this answer that we get, this kq over r, do you think the real answer, if we cut this up into a lot of little pieces so that each piece looks like a point, do you think the field is going to be more or less? Well, if you answer the question correctly, it's less because the field due to this piece is going down and the field due to this piece is going up and they're going to cancel. So the field is definitely going to be weaker than if we take all these charges and put them in a single point. Okay, how can we begin to solve this without using calculus? We'll break the charge into smaller and smaller pieces. And you might correctly guess that the smaller the piece, the more, the more it's going to look like a point charge than if you have a big piece. But we'll start with a simple, simple case where we divide this into three pieces. Okay, so this is what I've done. I've Unfortunately, I can't change this line because I've drawn it. And so I drew another one there, another one there. We have three pieces. Yes, I know they're not equal. This should be a little bit more this way. And each piece should be what? Well, that's one of the questions. Each piece should be 60 degrees because we have 180 degrees. So imagine these are equally drawn pieces. So now we have this arc of charge. It's definitely smaller, and it looks more like a point charge in the same way here and here. So how much charge is in this piece? Well, clearly that's one-third of the total charge, one-third Q. And the field due to this piece, again, it's not a point, so we would put the three charges at the center, and there would be a vector in this direction. Right? Let's draw that in. So this would be from the top piece. Whoops, let me get my pencil. It would be this E. And then from the middle piece, all those Q over 3, that one-third of Q in the center, is going to be a vector in this direction. And then... If we look at this piece, it's going to be a vector up in that direction. And since they're acting from the center, think about this. Since they're acting from the center, this line, right, to get 60 degrees, this would be at 30 degrees, this is at 90 degrees, this is at 30 degrees below there, this is at 90 degrees. And so from the center here is going to be the center, it's going to be at 60 degrees, okay? Let's maybe just think about it. So this vector is at 60 degrees. That angle is 60 degrees. This angle is 60 degrees. You can pause the video and puzzle that out. This is 30 degrees because it's at the center. Okay, so in order to get the field here, from the three things, we have to add these three vectors. So you're going to add this vector. What's that? 
Well, that's coming straight along the x-axis. So this is going to be k one third q, right? That's the amount of charge there. And the distance from the point to where the charge is is still r squared. This vector, you can see, it's also going to be k one-third Q, because there's one-third of the charge in this piece, right? One-third of the charge there. The distance is still R, so it's the same thing over R squared. And the magnitude of this vector here is also going to be K one-third Q over R squared. But when we go to add these, notice the y component of this is going to cancel the y component of that, but the two x components are going to add. So when we add these, we're adding, what can I write this? I'm going to go up here. We're getting that E equals E1x plus E2x plus E3x. Think for a minute what that means. This is E1. That's the x component, so it's going to be the cosine of 60 degrees. It's going to be this. Cosine 60. That'll be our E1x. Um, this one is just along the x-axis, so that's E2x, the whole thing. And this is E3x, it's also going to be times cosine uh, 60, sorry. Okay, so let's add all that together. Cosine 60 is a half. So this is going to be equal to, just watch, this is a half, this is a third, so that's one-sixth. And what's left over? K, Q, over R squared. This is going to be the same thing, one-sixth, K, Q over R squared, and this, because it's all along the x-axis, is just one-third K Q over R squared. Whoops, I forget. Oh, no, that's okay. I got the R squared there. And so, as in so many problems we see, we have the K Q over R squared is common. We just have to add the coefficients. So we're adding one-sixth plus one-sixth plus one-third. The answer... So this is two thirds. Can I squeeze it in? K Q over R squared. Okay, now you understand the process. Now go to five sections. Okay, so now we want to solve the five section problem. And <coughs> Uh, I, sh I hope you drew this. I should have asked you to draw it. So this is what your figure should look like. You should have taken the semicircle and divided it into five equal sections. Five into 180 is 36. So each section is 36 degrees. I haven't drawn it so well, but whatever. And I put a point at the center of each section. That's where we'll consider all the charge of that section located. So it's a point charge. And so... All of the charge in section 1 located here is going to give you a vector E1 in that direction and so on for E2, E3, E4, and E5. So you have five vectors that you've got to add. So let's find the properties of this vector. Let's How much charge is located in this section? What's the distance from the charge? to the place that we're calculating the field. We'll call that R1. What's the value of E1? 
And what's the x component of v1? Because like the last time you see, we have to find the, we have to add all the x components because the y component of v1 is going to be canceled by the y component of v5 just as the y component of e2 will be canceled by the y component of e4. Okay, so answer these questions and then come back. Okay, here's the answers. The amount of charge here is one-fifth the total charge because there's five equal pieces. The distance from where the charge is to where we're calculating the field is still the distance r. And so when we use the equation, we get one-fifth kq r squared for the value of that. But we need to find the x component. And as you go through the trig, you'll see that this is an angle of 36 degrees. And this is an angle of 72 degrees, so it's the cosine of 72 degrees. So with this, see if you can write out what the total E is. E total. It's going to be the sum of five pieces. And it's all going to be K Q over R squared. And so you've got five coefficients that you need to write in here. Why don't you try and do that? Okay, here are the answers. So we have one-fifth cosine 72. It comes out to that number. And notice, you're going to get that twice for E1 and E5, the x components of E1 and E5. So I put that in for the first coefficient. The next one is going to be one-fifth cosine of 36 degrees. That's 36 degrees. That's 0.1618. And I put that in twice because E2 and E4 are at 36 degrees to the x-axis. And E3 is just one-fifth, which is 0.2. And so we're adding this twice. So two times this, two times this, plus 0.2 gives us this. Notice that the last answer we got up here gave us uh, two-thirds, which was 6.66 repeating. And so the number is getting a little smaller. And we know that as we divide this into infinite number of charge, it's going to converge to some limit. Go ahead and do the nine parts. You should be able to do that because you see how this works. And then I'll show you how to do the calculus part. Okay, let's do the calculus problem. So in the calculus problem, we want to divide the circle into an infinite infinite number of infinitesimal parts. So we take a little arc length here and call it ds. And that little ds gives us a little de. So you should appreciate that that de is going to be equal to k dq. What's dq? dq is the amount of charge that's in the ds. The ds is how far from the point? It's r squared away. That will give us the value of de. But what we really need is dex, because we know from the previous problems that the y components are all going to cancel, and the final answer is this way. So the sum is the sum of all the dexs. So what's the dex going to be? dx is going to be kdq times the cosine of the angle. And what is the angle? The angle is the angle between the x-axis and that vector, because we want the x-component. Okay, so next question is, how much q is there located in the ds? And the other problem is, the cosine of the angle is going to vary, so we're going to be integrating what? From this angle here all the way up to this angle here. So we're going to be integrating from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So that's what the integral is going to look like. It's going to be the integral, whoops, 
the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of all the dex's and the dex's are this so but we have to we have to change the dq whoops i didn't mean to do that let me pause okay i can't erase it so anyway the um We've got to change the dq into something that has a d theta, not even a ds. So think about that, and so that we can integrate over, because we're going to be integrating the cosine of theta from a negative pi over two to pi over two. So see if you can do that. Spend a few, a few minutes trying to write out what that would look like, and then come back. Okay, look at this. So if we take this ds. It's part of the total length. So ds divided by L, that's the fraction of the total, right? If this is one-tenth L, this will be one-tenth. So I divide the ds into the dl and multiply that by q. This is the fraction of q, right? In the past, it was one-third, a one-fifth, a one-ninth. In this case, it's ds over LQ. That will give us the amount of charge in this piece. But... The ds can also be written as r d theta. So this ds is the radius times the angle. And so we're going to use the r d theta. So see if you can put those pieces together and come up with what's supposed to go in there. Okay, so here we are. This is not easy. So I have k, the de that's going to go here is the dex is k dq over r squared cosine theta. But the dq is ds over l, but we want to get rid of the ds, so we put in r d theta. And so the dq can be written as q over l times r d theta. So that's what's going to go up there. And then we'll have cosine theta d theta, and everything else will be a constant. So pause the video and do that algebra. Okay, so I got the k and the r squared. And for the dq, I get q over l r d theta. And, but I move the cosine theta d theta. So you see what I have is I have k, q over l r. So there's an r here and an r squared here. Here's what I'm going to integrate, cosine theta d theta. So rewrite this in more proper format. Okay, I'm running out of space, so I pulled all the constants out and I get kqr over l. There's the integral. We're going to do the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine theta d theta. One last thing is l is half the circumference of the circle. So l, I can cross out the l. Oops, and put in pi r. So I have what I have left in the denominator, if you can see it, is kq over pi r squared. And then I'm going to integrate this. So I'll tip you off. You should be able to do that. The cosine of theta d theta integrated between uh, minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 is going to be 2. But I have no more space, so I'm going to collapse this and come back. So, finally finishing up, we have this expression. I'm going to write it out. And remember, we said that this integral ends up being 2. And so, when I write this out, bring it down here, I'm going to have 2kq over pi r squared. So, there's my coefficient, the 2 over pi, and 2 over pi ends up being um, a, 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 an unending decimal, but 0.6366 and more decimal k q over r squared, and we're done.